one of those things that's constantly changing. And mandala is a way of calming ourselves in a constantly changing world. So in a way, these two things go really well together. Our, uh, our inspiration today is the hydrologic cycle. The hydrologic cycle is, sounds like a big word, but it's really broken down into two, hydro, which is water, and logic, which is smart. So it's the path in which water takes as it cycles through our environment. You maybe didn't know, but our water that we drink every day is really, really old. Not to gross you out, but it's been all over the world and back again hundreds and thousands of times. Constantly cycling, cycling, cycling. A mandala is a symbolic picture used in meditation. The weather is a symbol of endless change and mandalas are symbolic pictures of meditation. So we've got a perfect combination way to think about how the weather affects our lives. The hydrologic cycle, which this whole project is on, is also called the water cycle. The water cycle is how water moves between land and the ocean. Um, you can see from the diagram that it starts in the ocean. Well, we'll choose to have it start there. It's really everywhere all at once, so, but in order to simplify it, it starts in the ocean. And you might have been to the beach and seen how fog kind of happens and you go, what's going on out there? Why is it so foggy? It's bumming out my picnic. Well, there's a whole reason for it. The fog is actually evaporation or evaporative moisture, as they call it in the science world. And that is being pulled up by the heat of the sun. And that evaporative moisture brings itself up and it comes around until it gets together in a big party and it turns into a cloud. It's like a water party up there. Some clouds are heavier and darker, some clouds are fluffy, fluffy and lighter. That doesn't matter, it's still the same water. Then it gets so heavy at some point, it starts to move along and heads itself over, over top of the mountains, usually you might notice. And it gets too heavy and it falls, sometimes in the form of snow, sometimes in the form of water, uh, rain, sometimes in the form of snow, and sometimes in the form of rain. And when that rain comes down, it lands on the trees and the mountains who need it wonderfully. And it runs down and percolates down to the ground. Or if it lands on the tree, the tree uses it in its whole other process. And it goes into the tree and ends up out the roots. And it's still water. And it's flowing down, always down, returning back to the ocean. So it, on the way to the ocean, it goes through the ground, percolates through the rocks, ends up in a river. You might be swimming and floating on your inner tube in it, but it's still water. And eventually it makes its way back to the ocean. So that's the cycle. Now, we're not really talking about science here today too much. We're going to be making some art. And our art is going to be based on the idea of a mandala, and the weather cycle, the water weather cycle. So let's get started. So in order to make a mandala, we need some circular objects. I've gone through my cupboards, gone through my art supplies and found various things in small to large sizes. I have got a lid, another lid, a round, beautiful piece of painter's tape. I've got a saucer. I've got a, what is this, a yogurt lid. And I have a plate. So the first thing we want to do is we want to find the what I call the middle or the visual middle of my paper. You could turn your paper either horizontally or vertical. It doesn't matter today because we're making something round. And I'm going to just eyeball it. I take my pencil. Now it's good to use a pencil for this because you may end up wanting to erase. So maybe stay, uh, stay away from the super sharpies right now. Okay, so I've got my variety of circular objects. If you don't have what you need, just keep your eye open. Go look through the recycling, look through the cupboard. 
definitely double check with mom and dad. It's okay to use some of their plates because it might be something special from Aunt Nellie. So with the middle of my paper, kind of just to get an idea where I'm going to be centering it around, I'm going to be starting with the largest object. And the largest object is easier to start with because I can go in as I go. What I mean by in is I can add concentric rings in as I go. Now I'm going to want as many rings, like Saturn's rings, as there were in the, the uh, water cycle that I talked about. So we want one for, we'll recap, we want one for the ocean, one for the rivers, one for the tree or the mountains and the trees, one for the rain, and one for the clouds. Everything else you can decorate later. Okay, so we're going to get started with that. So I'd like to do this outer ring. I'm eyeballing it, sort of centering it the best I can, noticing how far apart it is on each side and the top. And I'm just going to wiggle it until it's right. And then I hold it down gently. And I'm going to trace. Oh, my hand's in the way. I better pick it up, start where I left off, and continue. I'm going to draw mine darker so that you can see it. Now, when I pick up the plate, it will reveal if I have a skip anywhere, and if I need to go back, I can do that. Looks good so far. Okay, the next layer is going to be I think this plate looks like about the right size. Maybe I could use this one. No, I think I'll use the plate. I like it. Now, there we go. Now this is the layer that we're going to be using for the next one in. So the first one is, this is going to create the clouds. The next one is going to be the rain layer. We're going kind of backwards from the outside in. Again, I just wiggle it around until I found where it looks good. If it's over too far, I'll know and just wiggle it. Now you may want to, as you're drawing around your objects, whoop, there's my hand again. Best not to move the object you're drawing around while you have to reposition your drawing hand, huh? I think I'll do that harder so you can see that at home. There we go. If I mess up, oops, no big deal, I can erase it. Look at that, all the pressure's taken off. Okay, so now I have the second layer. I'm gonna make a little stack of my objects because I don't need those anymore. Um, the next layer that I need is going to be a little smaller. Maybe I just need to experiment. That would be pretty small. That would be, I should say small. That leaves the, uh, makes the ring a little small. I don't mind that. I could do this one as well. I think I'm going to do the yogurt lid. Okay, again, I'm just placing it down. Now, this one's lighter than the plate, so I might have to hold it. And I see once I pushed it down that it's not exactly... I like things to be really centered, but you maybe don't worry so much about it. Whatever works for you. Again, i got to watch out for that hand. I almost made it all the way around. If you happen to wiggle, and your circular thing moves out of its circle, just put it back and draw it again. No biggie. Okay, so now I've got what I know is going to be the clouds, the rain. Now, after the rain comes the mountains and the trees, and I think I'm gonna use, hmm, how many more do I need? Let's check. I need mountains, trees, mountains and trees, I need river, and I need the ocean. So I need all these. So I'm gonna put the tape down. You have the option of using something that's hollow like this. You have the option of using the inside or the outside of it. And you get to decide that. That'll give you a little bit different size. I'm gonna use the inside of it. Drawing very carefully. Perfect, love it. Really, there's no such thing as perfect. I always say that, but. With art, you just gotta not worry about it. Okay, let's double check on our circles here. I've got the clouds. I've got, I have to do this because I could lose track. There's a lot of circles. Clouds, rain, mountains, and trees. 
I need two more. Oh my gosh, so that means I only need one more line. Because if I did two, so I've got, I'm going to have a center one, and that's going to be the ocean, and the outside one is going to be the river. I could do that, or I could do that. I like that. Easy decision. Just try it, see if you like it. Okay, centered it. Again, holding with my finger. You're finishing the circle. Oh my gosh, we are done. Whew, good job, guys. I'm going to let you catch up, try your hand at it, and we'll meet back here and finish it up. Okay, so now we're ready to start thinking about how we want to represent those different layers of the water cycle. We've got these rings we've drawn. Hopefully you have just the right amount for all the, we've got the clouds and the rain and the mountains and tree combo and the rivers and the ocean. So double check that. Um, thinking about the outer layer. We've got sort of fun thing to draw clouds. They can be just swiggly lines. You get to decide what your clouds are going to look like. I did some ideas, drew some ideas of what clouds are. Some potential cloud patterns for you. I found some of these on the internet. I looked up, just typed in black and white clouds. Uh, line drawings, clip art, that kind of thing. Otherwise, you just get pictures of the sky. Um, and it helped me to get some ideas about how I wanted to represent my clouds in my drawing. So the clouds are one of those things that you can pretty much just have a ball with. They're easy. You can make some squiggly lines. You can make some poofy lines. You can draw cartoon clouds. You can draw spirals. Whatever you feel works for you. I'm going to do, um, I think I'm going to draw a, take my pencil by the way. I've got a nice sharp pencil. Um, I have my sharpener ready in case it needs it. Try to give yourself a sharp pencil if you can. It helps. It keeps your art looking cool. And I'm going to just now, using my cloud uh, pictures as a reference, you don't have to practice. You can just have at it. If you want to draw light until you feel like you've got it right, that's great. I'm just going to go for it because I practiced a little bit already. So we're going to just turn our paper if we need to. You are not beholden to hold your paper in any particular way. Beholden means fancy old word for required. All right. So I've got some sort of simple clouds. I could do another layer in the background similar to the way I've done that. Let's just do that because Clouds are awesome. This time of year, I've noticed that there's really big, cool, poofy, high clouds over the mountains. Sometimes, they're having fun, they're getting squishy. Lots of clouds. Um, sometimes you have to uh, look at clouds from your memory. If you've ever been on an airplane, it's been a little while since I've been on an airplane, maybe you too. Uh, and look out the window and sometimes you just think, whoa, that's so cool. Those clouds are so poofy and it feels like they're solid, but really it's just water. Next layer, we have to think about something wonderful that happens when all that water that's in the clouds when all that water that's in the clouds gets to be too heavy, it falls in the form of rain or snow. But we're going to draw rain today. All right. 
So now we're gonna show some rain. You can draw it however you like. I'm looking at the different samples of the rain ideas that I found online and just ideas that I like to draw. Sometimes it's just as simple as diagonal lines looking like rain sleeting down. Um, I'm gonna turn my paper so I have a little room. I think I am gonna just draw some raindrops. I'm gonna draw, it looks a little bit like a teardrop. If you want to make it um, spaced out perfectly, you can do that so that they're the right amount away from each other. You can also just draw different sized raindrops. You could draw cartoon raindrops. I am turning my paper as I do this. There's a big one. So that I have, I can kind of get it straight up and down. Um, and my ring is not very wide, so I didn't have that many options for how to draw. I couldn't draw a whole huge rainstorm, so I'm gonna do a couple. I'm gonna keep going until I've filled my entire ring, though, so it's not lopsided. Some are lower, some are higher. I'm drawing kind of heavy because I'm Wanting you at home to see, you may want to draw light. As I always say in class, draw light until you get it right. All right. Okay, there is enough rain. Almost. It's always kind of fun to look at your art after you've been drawing it for a little while in case you want to check in. Let's see, how does that look? Sometimes you have to get a little distance from it too, or take a picture of it. And then look at the picture. It's to be amazing what you see in the picture that you didn't realize in real life. All right, so we have the clouds and we have our rain layer. I remember the hydrologic cycle. That's hard to say, the water cycle. The next thing that happens, oh, I skipped the mountains and the trees. The next thing that we need to draw is how the rain falls onto the mountains and the trees. Very important. If we don't have rain, we don't have trees. So it's kind of a fun way to think about shapes. In this case, I'm seeing trees as triangles and mountains can be triangles too. They can be sort of rounded triangles, little gumdroppy shapes. Um, some of my mountains and, and tree ideas are really, really kind of simple. This is a really fun pattern that's just overlapping, almost like uh, little lines overlapping each other, some simple um, triangular shapes over top of each other, just triangles with more triangles inside, got some little tree shapes down here. You get to decide what your trees are gonna look like and what your mountains are gonna look like. Okay. So I'm gonna get started by deciding. It's so hard to decide. I would like to do something a bit like that. Very, very nice little triangle. So I'm gonna maybe fill up this whole line. Again, we're working in the mandala style of a circular continuing pattern. So it's nice to keep turning your paper. It's helpful to, for you to see it, for me to see it. Maybe it doesn't help you. Could just be me. All right. So triangles are a simplified or simple way of showing something as hard to describe as a tree. I'm sure you've drawn trees before, maybe in your pictures. And trees are always different. So if your tree doesn't look like your neighbor's tree or sister's tree, so be it. Okay, now I am going to put some bigger triangles to show mountains. Maybe I'll make a wider triangle to really be a big mountain. Now right now they just look like points, like maybe even like the sun. I'll put a little one in front of it. It's 
fun all the decisions we get to make when we make art. If I put one behind another, it will look like it's overlapping it and make it look like it's in the distance. All right. Again, does it have to be perfect? No, it does not have to be perfect. I remind myself that as much as you. Okay, feeling like that's almost perfect. Just kidding. And we're gonna keep going. So I now have a bunch of triangles um, that are poking out and in a little while when we do the color, I'll make them look like mountains and trees by using brown and green and what other colors I got. So far, so good. We've got our trees and our mountains. They're just triangles right now, but in a minute when we add color, we'll really be able to tell them apart. Next, we have another layer. What happens after the water falls down through the trees and through the mountains, down, percolates down, through the ground and ends up coming out in, you guessed it, the river. So the river is so much fun. Maybe you enjoy swimming in it as much as I do. Right now, we're gonna be thinking about drawing it and how it would look. We're just gonna draw a pattern that symbolizes the way the river feels to us. Something as simple as lines, uh, you could draw fish, it just depends on how you feel. Some ideas of river patterns that I found were fun and chose to draw. I'm gonna pick one now for my river ring. Hmm. Let's see. I think something as simple as wiggly lines. Just gonna make some wiggly lines because I'm feeling wiggly. I'm gonna be adding the wiggly river lines to this ring here. I know I already have a ring so I can follow that. If I just go crazy and draw it, it'll look one way. Maybe that's your style. Um, if I be more careful, it'll look another way. Always are perfect. Any way you decide to draw it. Now stop stalling, Nancy, and just start drawing. Whoa. Now remember, rivers are pretty uh, smooth. There's not really a square river anywhere that I've seen. Not many corners in a river. So just adding the curves and turning my paper. Check in with your bod, see if your arm's getting sore, if your pencil's getting a little soft, if it's feeling kind of dull. Time to sharpen the pencil. Yeah, looks better. Okay, that's good. I think I will do another couple of lines because the lines are so fun. One of the elements of art are lines. Got quite a few elements of art in our picture today. We've got lines, we've got shapes. See the triangle shapes, see the drip shapes. We've got more lines up in the clouds. We've got our rings, which are actually circles. Boy, we are, we've been busy. Wow, looking good. I wonder how you're doing at home, how your river's looking so far. I'm doing my best to stay in the ring lines that separate the different layers of the water cycle. Looking good. I might do add one more bigger layer. That's what happens when you start drawing. It's hard to stop sometimes. There we go. Now don't forget, if while we're working on this, you get thirsty or hungry or sleepy, pause the video and do what you need to do because all about you. You and the water today. Okay, so, so far so good. We've got the river finished. We're drawing in our pencil right now. In a minute, we're gonna be using our colored pencils to add some more color so you can really see what layer is what. But we have one left, one layer left, the center layer. One center layer left. 
I wonder, that circle is a very important circle. It's where all the water ends back up. It's why everything happens in the ocean, why we have to take good care of it. So the ocean is something that's like the river. It's still... The ocean is like the river. It's still water, but it's a little different. It might have a different movement or a different feeling or a different intensity. Maybe the ocean crashes where the river just sort of bubbles and rumbles by. Um, that kind of action, that drama, you can show with your marks now. So some of my ocean ideas were some more simple and more complicated. You get to decide how it feels. You have a nice circle in the middle. I see a dot in the middle that I made so I'd know where to find my center. Take a little second and erase that. So some of the ocean drawings that I found would be fun for my drawing. I did some little sketches and practices. You don't have to practice if you know exactly what you want to do. Just start drawing lightly and work it out in the actual artwork. So I think I'd like to do something, something close to the river because it's something close in, in the pattern and the lines of the river because it's similar to that. But maybe, hmm, I have choices. I think I'm going to do the wave, just the simple wave pattern, but I'm not going to just draw it across the center line. I'm going to draw the waves around. It might be tricky. Let's see if I can do it. So I know that I want to fit each wave next to the other, kind of like a C shape. And we'll see how it looks. Now at this point, when I start to get all precious about my art, <laughs> oh, it has to look just right, I go, uh-uh, Nancy, just make it and let it be what it is. Just like the ocean, the ocean doesn't worry about if its waves are perfect, if its waves are exactly the same size each time. Just tell myself not to stress out. Squish a wave in there if you need to. Yes! Good thing I reminded myself that because it's looking good so far. Okay, so I think I'm gonna stop drawing there because I like it. Now, I might want to uh, do a little cleanup on it with the with the pencil lines in a minute, but the next layer is we're going to be adding Sharpie marker to our drawing. We're going to be carefully drawing over top of all of our pencil lines. So if you need to take a little break and go outside, stretch your legs, maybe get a glass of water, uh, go ahead and do that. And I'll see you back here in a minute. Hopefully you've had a chance to take a little break after all your hard work drawing. Um, right now we're going to be using a Sharpie marker if you have it. If you don't have a Sharpie, you could use a colored pencil, you could use a regular marker, whatever you have that will really add some, some uh, color and some pop to your pencil drawing. So you want to approach this with a sort of... Um, calm. <laughs> How do I say it? Sharpie is definitely forever. Um, even the fine, fine Sharpie that I'm using today, if you have a thick Sharpie, that will work too. Um, you can choose whichever one feels best for you in your drawing. I have a lot of little details, so I want to um, use my fine Sharpie. Now, the tricky thing about going around your circles, the first step I like to do is to go over the circle pencil lines with the with a Sharpie. It can be hard to do if you are um, wiggly at all. So it might help for you to have your original circular things that you can sketch around. So you want to start with your, just like you drew with your pencil, start with your largest objects, put it back over top, draw around. Now 
Sometimes your pen may get on the edge of the plate. So if you're using a fancy plate from grandma's china cabinet, maybe think of a different plate. The next layer was another plate doing the same thing. Drawing, setting my plate back down on the other ring that I had drawn in pencil earlier. Sometimes you don't get it just perfect and just wiggle it with your eyes and your hands till it gets to be where you want it. What did I use next? I think I used the yogurt lid. Aha! Okay. Again, I'm just placing it down as best I can. Don't stress out too bad if you don't get it perfect. We're going to be erasing our, oh, there I go, good example. I goofed, keep going, all right. We're gonna be erasing our pencil lines afterward. I think the blue tape, I remember that, oh, there's a dog hair, that's my dog Chester. If any of you at home remember Chester, his hair is everywhere. Oh my gosh, and so I'm going to go on the inside of this one because I did it on the inside. Well, pretty good. Let's see, I think I used the little lid. And that's my final circle. And whoops. Good enough. And I'm trying to be careful again, just like I was, because Sharpie kind of runs away sometimes. Oh gosh. You have to kind of position yourself in the right way. Move your arm. All right. Very good, I think we did it. So now I have, what do I have to do? I'm gonna start in the middle. If I start in the middle and work my way out, with the Sharpie and also with my colored pencils when it's time for those, um, I will be less likely to smear and make a kind of a big mess out of my drawing. So I'm going to use my Sharpie and go over top. Of all the lines. Now you're gonna be doing this at home, so I'm just gonna finish some of these you'll be going over your lines and I'll be going over mine here at home or here at the studio and um, and when we come back together you'll have all of your hopefully you'll have all of your pencil lines colored uh, with Sharpie colored over so that's all black lines and when we're done with that we're going to take an eraser and we're going to erase over any pencil lines that are showing outside of the Sharpie lines. That way we'll have a nice clean slate to get a start with our color. We'll see you back in a minute. Okay, we're back. So hopefully you've had enough time to use your Sharpie and go over all of your pencil lines nice and careful and slow so that you could get fabulous black lines. Then after that, we're going to take our eraser and erase any little bits of pencil that are showing. I like to make little circular lines with my eraser, little circular movements to get all that stuff up. All right, so I'm just erasing the center part because that's where I'm gonna color right now. You've got Sharpie all over there and you're gonna erase all of those pencil lines as thoroughly as you can because they will show underneath your colored pencils later. So take a little second to do that carefully if you can. And now finally we're going to add the color part, one of the elements of art. I always love to sneak those in for you. 
Um, I'm going to start in the center, just the way I started drawing my Sharpie in the center. Thinking about the ocean colors, I rather like blue. If you look at my colored pencils, you will see that the ones that I really like are a lot shorter than the other ones. Kind of an easy way to tell. I'm going to use both of these blues because I rather rather like the combination. I'm going to do a careful one direction. I say careful because try to stay in your lines. One direction of pencil and the same pressure will get you a nice smooth ocean. Ah, noticing that my blue pencil is getting a little bit dull, my light blue. So I might take this chance to use my sharpener. Nice. If your pencil isn't sharp, it kind of sometimes can be, um, doesn't look quite as awesome. But you make that choice. All right, so I've got one layer of blue in the middle. I'm going around getting any little, what I call holidays, which are little white spots that are showing. If you have lots of lines all over the place, that's okay too. Whatever it is, however you want to color it, you can go across in the other direction. Just to give it a nice kind of solid blue. So I have the lighter blue inside. I'm gonna use this violet blue is a great color and I'm thinking about my approach because now I've got this sort of circular ring of waves and I kind of want to have it just be um, kind of pointing inward my pencil lines will show so you'll find that your colored pencil is trickier than it seems there's different ways of marking with it. You can press hard, you can press soft. And you can color fast, you can color slow, you can go sideways. You can do little swirly curlies with your colored pencil. Here, I'll show you what that looks like. If you do little swirly curlies, then you end up getting kind of a little fluffy color pencil lines. Not sure if you can see that at home, but it does look a little different. So just experiment if you need to use a piece of scratch paper or something on the side that you can practice how you'd like it to look. That'll give you a chance to, uh, back around my edges, it'll give you a chance, uh, give you a chance to see how your marks are looking and practice. All right, if you go outside of your lines, no biggie. All right. So I'm rather liking this. I'm feeling like I'm liking where it's starting. Um, the ocean is a very important part. It's right in the center. And the next layer is the river. And the river, we could make it blue again, but it might start to look like part of the ocean. So I'm going to change the colors just a little bit. I'm gonna add a little greens, not too much. I'm going to go into my colored pencils and I'm gonna choose, just look and see what you've got. I'm gonna choose two greens that are uh, pretty. And I'm also gonna use, I think I'm gonna use a couple of blues too. All right, so I'll put those up there because I know I'm using them. While I've got them up here, I'm looking to see if they're um, if they need to be sharpened. This one's pretty good, but I think I could give it a little turn. Good. You can tell a lot by how the pencil feels in your sharpener, so pay attention to that. When the next time you're sharpening, you can tell is it lopsided. Sometimes you go to sharpen it and it only sharpens one side. And again, I'm just turning my paper every time I need to. You may be able to just color straight. Let me see if I can do it. Oh yeah, I can do it. Now, it's a good time to check in with yourself as you're in the midst or in this middle of coloring. 
Let's check in with your body. I always like to kind of feel my shoulders, feel my back, feel my, what if I'm sitting on if I'm comfy? Do I need to pet the dog? Do I need to go outside for a minute? You know, it's not a race. Just do what you need to do. All right, liking that first layer of green. I'm going for the next layer of green, a darker green this time. I'm gonna go around. Oh boy, liking that. So when you get to your outer layers, just keep going your outer rings. Next ring would be the trees and the mountains. Coloring is fun, but it's a slow process. You can't hurry it. Um, it can be it can be one of those things that you can get lost in. I don't want to get too lost because I'm still teaching a video here, so I want to keep going. But I wanted to um, take a pause with my coloring when I finish this layer of green. And I want to take a minute to show you the drawing that I did that this one is sort of based on. It's a little different. This one was a lot of fun and it was a lot of work. <laughs> so I had to really uh, get into it and focus. Keep my um, keep myself oh, dedicated or centered like the mandala. Um, and so you can see that as I went out, I added the layer of mountains and I decided to make the mountains dark brown and light brown because I have those two in my colors of pencils. Um, I pressed a little bit harder on the browns when I was closer into the river circle so that I was able to make it darker at the bottom. Gives it the illusion of depth making it look like it's behind something. Then I chose to make my, the little triangles every so often light green and dark green um, and so that they could show or represent uh, trees. So it doesn't have to be exactly drawn like a tree. You can make it stylized like I did. You can make it more realistic. You get to decide how your trees are gonna look, and how your mountains are gonna look. You could just draw trees, you could just draw mountains whatever works for you. I put a little snow on the top of my mountains so that you could see they weren't just brown trees. I did put some sky behind, so that was fun. The next layer, I did a just the raindrops. I did blue raindrops, light blue and dark blue, and I decided for the background raindrops, I decided to just throw some orange and yellow in there just to make those colors pop. That's the um, complementary color or the one that looks like exciting next to another color. So for example, purple and yellow, blue and orange. So those kind of things look, they look, some, the background, think about your backgrounds. Okay, so then of course the final ring, which is the clouds, super fun. I decided to make my clouds uh, white with a little bit of blue edging to kind of show that their clouds are in front of clouds or in front of clouds. And then a different shades of blue and purple in the sky in the background. Um, so it was a lot of fun and I hope that your coloring of your uh, water cycle mandala turns out to be just as exciting and worthwhile as mine was. I'm so happy to be here with you today and really thrilled to uh, see what you've made. So until we meet again.